lots of fire. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Easter Jeep Safari. I have my boy Scott here, the Trail Reaper. You. And I got my boy Cord here, Bombshell JKU. We were off to Cliffhanger. So. And we started looking and we're just like, this is a lot of people. And the guys from Yukon were there, Icon was there, Dirty Life was there, everybody was there. All good people. Yes. All good people. But just it's a lot, all a lot equal in a long day. A lot, <laughs> a lot of people. A lot of people. I told Don that we were we had a mild trail we were doing on Wednesday, and it wasn't anything crazy. He calls me and goes, you said we're doing cliffhanger, right? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, they say it's a level eight. I'm like, it was a level eight seven years ago before people had 40s. Yeah. It's not a level eight anymore. It's like a level four or five. You're fine. And he's like, oh, okay. Thanks, Nick. Just make sure you're there to spot me. And I'm like, I'll be there to spot you. And then we jumped through those first few obstacles. He knew that was BS as soon as he went down that tier yes. and hit that first drop. Yes. Oh, yeah. And because he like, got out of the car and like, walked over to me and he said, a four? Yeah. A lot of trails have one good feature on them or like two good features or something, but all of Cliffhanger is a good feature. Beautiful. Because you're literally sitting on the side of a cliff, mm -hmm. but you go to two different sides of that cliff. Like you're on this side of the mountain and then this side of the mountain. Mm -hmm. And you, you just see all of Moab in a 360 degree. I mean, you get to dip down to the base of the canyon, you get to yeah. climb all the way up it, get to yes. high points, drop down low again, come back out to the top of the world. And yes. it's just, it's beautiful. Yes. Absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Micah from Off-Road Extreme came out. He brought the boss's rig 
and he had the e-torque. I didn't even know this thing existed. Mm -hmm. It is right, an right, it is right. a gasoline electric, electric. Jeep. Yeah, yep. combined. Hybrid. Yes, yeah. it's weird. Yeah. But he had that, and anyone knows anything about electric motors? Like they're torquey. So it's been one heck of a day. Yeah. Scott set my parking brake, and I um, got in my Jeep, and all of a sudden my brake lights on. So now when I drive, it's going the whole time. Thanks a lot, Scott. So Bill's power steering pump went out on That's cliffhanger right. Yes. right yes. before the big drop. That's that, right. No, That's right. yes. If there's one trail you don't want your power steering to go out on, it's probably the one that has a lot of cliffs. Yeah. Yeah. So he ended up just calling it early before it totally went out. Hey guys, we are on Cliffhanger. Lucky enough today, I was with my buddy Tyler from Power Tank. Dude, always pumped to have you out here. Thank you. Good to see you. Really glad to see our products on such an amazing rig. Scott has been using our Ventoso tire inflator for a long time. He was one of our first testers. I love this little booger right here. This thing makes life so easy because it's a push on, pull off really simple so you shove it on and you don't have to hold anything you don't have to be crouched down there holding pressure and the fact that like it's a such a nice swivel and it doesn't leak at all at well, any of those swivel points. it's the simple things that make the power tank the power tank yeah another cool feature um as an end user that i liked is the dual um yeah. pressure relief uh, uh valves here so if you do overfill that you can go straight into a dump there you guys get out on these trails way more than most companies that i see <laughs> so i know you get to see it but this being able to just shove that on and that's it like done right there right that's what makes all the difference to me when i went to a tire this big um i needed more speed and filling up the tires yeah and i was burning up little compressor pumps you know and also sick of the, being at the end of the trail and it taking me 40 minutes to <laughs> fill up my tires the bigger um, the tire the more you need a power tank yeah so to do a 43 inch tall tire in and do add five pounds in whatever that was 10 seconds Speed is always the name of the game, yeah. so that's why we do that push on chuck. It's a little faster. Yeah, and then and yeah. Uh, with the new design of our Ventoso, it's actually a larger diameter bore, so we get that slight increase in speed. So yeah, love the product. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, yeah, and it's awesome to get out here at another event, get in a wheel, and hang out with you, man. It's always a great time, so, Scott. Yeah, awesome, buddy.
So yeah, that, that literally wrapped up Wednesday on Cliffhanger. Yep. It was a very, you know, just nice, chill, long day. Long day, but it but was a good day. No, no crazy no, things happening. Yeah. No major breaks or anything. Yep. Everybody just off the trail. couple things, yeah. Yep. And yep. then that led into Moab. We didn't have any of our scheduled runs with brands. Yeah. So then it was the first day that when we showed up at the like parking lot, the trailhead meeting. I got to fit my truck and trailer in the parking lot. That we didn't have yeah. like, we we're like, right. oh no, what, you know, what has happened? Yeah. You know, yeah. we, we've got a lot of people. Yep. This is going to be it's more cool. of a logistics. Yeah. It was at like, oh, this is going to be a simpler day. Moab Rim is the only trail in Moab, I think, that you're off camber 100% of the time. And it's not just about being off camber, but is an uncomfortable off camber. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the reason they call it Moab Rim is because the rim of the mountain literally overlooks the roads in the city of Moab. Mm -hmm. You're flirting with the edge yes. the whole time. And yes. Off camber, off camber. Towards the edge. Towards the edge. And, and it's, it's not far enough to make you land in the Green River. Yeah, you're, you're going to the yeah. road. Yeah. yeah. You're going to the road down below. 100%. Yeah. yeah. We didn't really have to get out and spot one person. Yeah. Nothing had to happen. Right. It just like flowed. That was the difference in, in the, the dynamics of that day. Team, yeah. Was there was no spotting. We were just... Yep. Going. There was a few times people got out just because they were uncomfortable with spotting or whatever. I mean, uncomfortable with off-camber stuff. But for the most part, people just put their tires where they wanted to put them. They went where they wanted to go, and they just did their things. And all of a sudden, Scott gets on the radio and Scott says, Stop, stop. Well, it was more of like a because I couldn't come up with just Something's hanging words. From your I teeth. just, there's <laughs> bad things. Just stop. Like, everybody yes. stop. Watching Andy drop down uh, this last little ledge, and I saw something that kind of flopping rip the upper link mount off. And then that caused a lot of the axle shaft to rotate, which then slipped the, the drive shaft out. He just got a brand new three link done because in Texas, he had ripped off the frame, his factory mount. Snack time? Yeah. Snack time. It's gonna be here for a little bit, I think. There you go. Grind this a little bit, clear it so it kind of sits in there. I'll, I can weld this and we don't we even, instead of getting, well, it's gonna need to be straightened a little bit, right? Trail fixes. Hey, close is close enough. <laughs> it doesn't have to be pretty. It's not gonna be pretty, but we'll get it back together. I'm pretty confident in that and be able to finish the finish the day. So I got this thing. That's a good because story. Too. It's a good story. <laughs> we, I was uh, hosting one of my it, one of my big bear takeovers. A uh, guy ripped like uh, he he had a catastrophic failure. Somebody within the group was like, "Well, I got a welder." but I don't know how to weld. We're like, well, bring it up. Well, it was more like, do we need to part the seas to get your car up here? And he's right. like, no, it's totally portable. Okay, great. He comes up and he pops this thing open. I mean, it's a full on MIG welder. You know, it's got its own power source. Okay. Doesn't need to be connected nope. to anything. Finished the trail and I was like, that I need. Right after that, I went and bought 
That exact so you have your welder. welder. Yep. You pull it out. I had a welder, pulled it out. Bill's not a science guy. Went to town, started burning metal. We burned that thing in um, and good and hot. And I mean, I caught a couple rags on fire. That's just all protecting the threads because we're because I'm using flux core. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not a clean weld. All that splatter, keeping that off the threads so we didn't create a bigger problem than we were trying to solve. Uh, then that's it. My job is done here, people. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Thanks. I'm trying to minimize Dennis's editing time. Thank you. Did you get through? <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. I guess welded it in stronger than it was before because he not only finished that day, but then he finished the week on yeah. that oh, yeah. thing. You got red dirt all over your top of your head, buddy. Not only did he build my bed, it's also my barber. <laughs> and then we get to the sand dunes. Yeah. Waiting for like, yeah. Ooh, See, there's a couple juices, rod, something's gonna go, something's gonna yeah. go. Yeah. end up at Rusty Now. Rusty Now. Right? From the outside perspective, it was kind of like the Jeep version of Lady in the Tramp. 